Hey there, just checking in from the Blue Ridge Mountains, taking a little break from the boat work, get up into some cooler weather. And I thought I'd take the time to give you guys a little rundown on how and why we chose the boat that we did. Uh, it was really confusing. This is our fourth boat and you'd think that we'd know better after all these years. And we ended up surveying four boats. We had offers on five boats. It took almost a year to buy a boat. So we got a lot of lessons learned and if you're in the market for a boat, a catamaran especially, I think you're going to find some useful information here because uh, we sure learned a lot. I want to pass along some of that to you. All right, so I'm going to review the five boats that we had deals on and uh, tell you why we chose the one that we did, of course. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to explain the lessons that we learned or uh, the things I wish that I'd known before we started our search. Uh, if you want a detailed review of these boats individually or to hear why we went with a catamaran this time, let me know in the comments section and I'll put together a detailed video for each one. A little bit about us. So we've been cruising on and off since 2002 and have had three monohulls previously. We've had small, simple boats and big, complex ones. This is our first catamaran. We thought with a few miles under our keel, we'd have a good idea what we were looking for. So our requirements were these based on what we thought we wanted. First of all, it had to be 44 feet or larger for a couple of reasons. This time around, we wanted to be able to take our friends and family along comfortably. And also, I'm about six foot two, and uh, some of these older designs, the smaller boats, they just don't have the headroom. So I'm bumping my head on these boats. So it had to be 44 feet or larger. And we also wanted it to be fast and comfortable which is what we all want, right? We always want that comfortable ride that can get us there uh, quickly and efficiently. We wanted it to be on the faster side because we've got some experience in the ocean. We thought we could handle it. We wanted a modern design with the galley up. There are some older boats that have the galley down and we just wanted the salon to uh, have the kitchen in it so that we could be uh, all in one place when we were entertaining or taking along guests. We needed the boat to be in a condition where any repairs necessary were really within our skill set. By now, we know what we can do and we can't do, and we just couldn't handle a, a boat that was all beat up and really needed extensive repairs. Uh, it had to be located either in the United States or in the Caribbean, basically because we have a dog. It's tough to get her over to Europe or down into the South Pacific or New Zealand or Australia, so the boat had to be based at least initially in the Caribbean or probably on the southeast coast of the United States. And this is the big one, our budget limitation. We wanted to spend no more than $300,000 all in. That means for the boat, any repairs that she needed, and also outfitting her for cruising with the uh, cruising gear and the safety equipment that we feel is necessary. The contenders. Of course, I looked at boats online for months and months and months beforehand, and eventually we narrowed it down to five boats that we had deals on, four of which we ended up surveying. Uh, first is a Privilege 465 Easy Cruise named Avanti. This is actually a 49-foot long boat. Uh, the next, an Outremer 55 by the name of Plaisir. A Voyage 440 or Voyage 44 by the name of Nike. A Shoning 49 by the name of Sea Level. And finally, a Leopard 46 by the name of Star Eyes. We'll start with the Privilege. This is a 2001 Privilege 465 Easy Cruise. It's a very high quality boat. It's a foam core construction. The woodwork and finish in these boats is just absolutely beautiful. It's top notch. And while they aren't particularly fast, at 49 feet, we thought that Avanti would have the legs that a smaller, lighter design would have. The only reason we could afford it was that this boat had been left on a mooring in Tortola for quite a while. There were unattended leaks which damaged the woodwork, and you could tell that this boat was a little neglected. She'd need just a bit of work. We made a deal at $272,000, which left us a little bit of room for repairs. 
Uh, however, when the broker started dropping hints that the seller wouldn't negotiate after survey, we bogged out and canceled our flights. This Outremer 55 in St. Martin, named Plaisir, was an absolute rocket ship. Uh, this was one of the first boats out of the molds in 1992, and the original owner had simply gotten too old for all that horsepower. The boat showed its age, but if it could be had for the 220000 that we'd made a deal for, we'd be in good shape after we put in some time and money for uh, making this boat really into what we wanted. After a few hours making 14 plus knots in a 20 knot breeze, I had to admit the boat was pretty intimidating. The ride was pretty good for a fast boat, but even in a moderate chop, I had to hold on to something when walking around. On survey, one of the engines overheated. Then the surveyor found a broken bulkhead and rotten stringers. The broker said that the owner wasn't going to budge on price. He even hinted they had other offers. Even if we could have it for $220,000, we would be fixing this one up for months. Time is worth a lot more than a few bucks, so we passed. I regretted that one for a while, but it was the right call. The next boat, Nike, was back in Tortola. Uh, it's a Voyage 440 or Voyage 44, and it surveyed nearly perfectly. It was a bit small and dated inside, but this boat was well kept by a meticulous owner. At 265000 it was within our budget. So I flew back down to Tortola for the sea trial. The broker had convinced me that the low bridge deck clearance of this design wouldn't be an issue. But even in the shelter of Sir Francis Drake Channel, the boat slammed so hard it sounded like a bomb going off every few seconds. It was really just intolerable. I realized that there's no way our dog could sleep on the floor or even walk. So we walked. Undaunted? Okay, we were a bit bumming by now. We made a deal on an owner-built Shoning 49 named Sea Level that had just completed a circumnavigation. We made the deal at 295 with the understanding that the owner would have to concede on anything found at survey. These boats are really, really fast and, and beautiful. Look at those lines. We should never have surveyed this boat. There were two big problems with this boat that should have been deal killers. First, there really is no cockpit area on this boat at all. Seating for three up top is all you could really hope for. Secondly, this was an extremely twitchy boat. It's really, really fast, but the ride was terrible. Megan, who has never been prone to seasickness in all of our travels offshore, got a little ill in relatively mild conditions between Catalina and San Diego. But we were feeling a little desperate at this point and surveyed her anyway. We found all sorts of issues with the cord hull and rigging, too much customization in the plumbing and electrical, and in the end, we did the right thing. We walked away. So, after a couple of weeks, we were ready for more punishment. We decided to look into an ex-charter boat. Now, we'd sworn these off basically because of what we'd read on the internet about abused boats with endless later maintenance issues. Plus, we thought they looked a little generic and, and plain Jane. We'd like something a little bit more exotic looking. This Leopard 46 was back in Tortola, so we got back on an airplane to the Caribbean. Modern design, galley up, great cockpit. Sure, we'd have to give up some speed, but for friends, family, and perhaps a future charter business, this design is a proven winner with a great reputation. At 292000 we were inching over our budget once outfitted, but it looked like green lights, but was totally misrepresented Hi, by the broker. After a lot of back and forth and a major price reduction, we decided to buy the boat as is. Instead of going through the moorings, quote, phase out 
program in which they, quote, fix things found on survey, we'd simply write a check and sail away, fixing things ourselves. This proved to be the right move, and I may make another video detailing that process. We were proud owners of a Leopard 46 we named Clarity. She's been a great boat. So I wanted to share a few of the lessons I learned in this boat buying process. Now, I thought I had a lot of experience. We've been sailing for quite a while. We've had several boats, but we definitely learned a lot buying a catamaran. Stuff we probably couldn't have learned any other way. So number one, there are no deals out there on catamarans. Because they're so popular, market prices are pretty easy to determine on cats. You just get what you pay for. Number two, and this is a really big one, faster catamarans have a much less comfortable ride than those that are less performance oriented. And this is no small thing. It's a big deal on catamarans. See, in a monohull, you don't always have to compromise on performance. There are fast monohulls that have a fairly decent motion. But because cats are so weight sensitive, fast boats are very light boats. And light boats feel every ripple and every bump on the ocean. It's not just uncomfortable, it's exhausting. Number three, never trust an advertisement that you find on Yacht World or Craigslist or whatever. You have to see the boats in person. The brokers, they may not know the actual condition of the boat. They may have never even seen the boat in person. There's just no substitute for legwork. You've got to get on an airplane and go see the boat. In the end, we spent probably near $25,000 between travel and surveys, but really it was money well spent. If we had jumped into any of these other boats without having our eyes wide open, it probably would have been a big expensive mistake. So did we end up with the perfect boat? No. She's not perfect, but the design compromises on the Leopard 46 are the right ones for us. Uh, she's on the faster end of the cruising spectrum. She's a well-built boat, and she's designed for livability. She's still counted as one of the best designs in her class. I'm not a yacht broker, but if you've got questions about buying a catamaran or questions about the experience that we had, feel free to drop me a line, you know where to find me on the social media outlets, or just leave a comment below and I'll get to it there. Take care.